Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Netus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. Today, we compare between exotoxin and endotoxin. Exo means out because it's a toxin that is secreted out of the bacterial cell. Conversely, an endotoxin, endo means in, is part of the membrane that is within the bacterial organism. As long as this bacteria remains alive, this toxin, its membrane, is not just gonna leave it and jump away. It shall remain endo. So that's the basic idea. Exotoxin, the toxin is literally released to the exo. But endotoxin, the toxin is part of the membrane. It's the outer membrane of the gram-negative bacteria. That's why this bacterium is pink. Do you remember the outer membrane of the gram-negative bacteria? It was the lipid A, lipopolysaccharide. The toxin is part of me. Will never leave me. It's on my dead body. Only after you kill me and destroy everything within me, only then will the toxin leave. Let's review what we have discussed before. Bacteria versus humans. Prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. Bacteria do have a cell wall. Humans do not. As for the cell membrane or plasma membrane or cytoplasmic membrane, both of them have it. So here's the cell structure of a bacteria. Cell wall on the outside, cell membrane deeper, and then the cytoplasm and not a nuclear membrane, but nuclear material. What was in the cell membrane? Lipid. As for the gram-negative bacteria, we have an inner membrane and an outer membrane, and between them there is the periplasmic space. The outer membrane is above the cell wall. It's on the outside. What's the structure of the outer membrane? Very similar to the inner membrane. We're talking lipid bilayer. And we compared between gram-positive and gram-negative structure before. Please pause and review. Just a reminder that the gram negatives have an outer membrane, but gram positive usually do not. In that outer membrane, there is lipid bilayer, and we have lipopolysaccharide endotoxin. We talked about polysaccharide O, which is a weak antigen, and lipid A, which is pyrogenic, i.e. causes fever. And don't forget that lipid A stimulates interleukin-1, which causes fever and inflammation, and TNF-alpha, which recruits white blood cell and activates your endothelium. So this is what we mean when we say endotoxin, i.e. something unique to the gram negatives. First, we'll talk about the exotoxin, then we'll talk about the endotoxin, and then we'll compare between the two. Exotoxin, I'm released from the bacteria. I could be gram-positive or gram-negative bacteria. Who made me? An order from the genetic material. Bacterial plasmid or prophage, they carry genes which code for proteins. The protein is the exotoxin. It's a polypeptide in structure. Since it's called exotoxin, it is released and it's gonna travel from the release site to the target organ. However, be careful because high temperature can inactivate the exotoxin. Usually we give it a name that is very similar to the name of the disease that it causes. Example, Shiga toxin is an exotoxin. It causes Shigellosis. Osis means condition. Shigella is Shigella. Another example, anthrax toxin causes anthrax. Botulinum toxin causes botulism. Some of these exotoxins are lethal, such as botulinum toxin. Only a few nanograms per kilogram of your body weight can kill you. The good news is it is heat labile, which means raising the temperature can kill this very powerful toxin. So if you're not sure, if you have doubts about your tuna can, and you're afraid that the tuna can might be compromised or dented, and you not want to get botulism, just cook the food. Just boil the contents and you will inactivate the exotoxin because knowledge is power. Exotoxins are strongly immunogenic and antigenic and for this antigen you'll make an antibody called antitoxin. It has a variety of different mechanisms. Some of them cause ADP ribosylation. What the flu does that mean? It means bring me a molecule of ADP and a molecule of ribose. Oh, by the way, where did you get them from? From your NAD+. And then I bind these two together to make ADP ribosyl, elongation factor 2, 
which can lead to cell death. Another mechanism is to disrupt the cell membrane by making pores, which is a hole in the wall, I mean in the membrane, or it could cause lysis of the cell, such as phospholipase C. This is how the alpha toxin of Clostridium perfringens, which we'll talk about in a later video, works. A fourth mechanism is hemolysin, which causes hemolysis, destruction of blood cells. Some exotoxins are like the Incredible Hulk, super antigens. They stimulate a third of your T lymphocytes, inducing them to release lots of cytokines. This cytokine storm can lead to multi-organ failure, shock, and death. One common example of exotoxin is AB toxin. What does A mean? Active. This has enzyme activity. This is the toxic part of the toxin. B is just for binding, to bind to your cell receptor, cause endocytosis of the toxin so that A can start working and causing trouble. Next, endotoxin, gram-negative only, because this is part of the outer membrane, specifically lipid A. It's part of the membrane on my dead body. It's not gonna leave me unless you kill me. Sometimes it's released during cell division, but that's an exception. The rule is here. Usually does not cause formation of antibody. There is no antitoxin for the endotoxin. And as you can imagine, making vaccines against this, i.e., toxoids against this is very difficult. Unlike the exotoxin, which can lead to disruption of the cell membrane, lysis of the cell, hemolysis of your red blood cell, ADP ribosylation, i.e. gazillion mechanisms, all the endotoxins have the same freaking mechanism, which is the picture of gram-negative sepsis. The patient has fever, hypotension, and then, thanks to the baroreceptor reflex, the hypotension will cause tachycardia, and you will have volume depletion. Extracellular fluid volume depletion. You might even bleed from your gut, which causes more volume depletion. Why do I have all of this? Because of these molecules, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, interleukin-18, and TNF-alpha. Don't ever forget that interleukin-1 is pyrogenic. It causes fever. Moreover, lipid A will activate two opposites. It activates factor 12, this is coagulation factor number 12, also known as Hagman factor, which causes clots because it's a coagulation factor. Coagulation means clots. And it also activates fibrinolysis, which means breaking down clots. You're making clots, you're breaking down clots. What's the name of the disease where you keep making and breaking clots? Disseminated intravascular coagulation, where you bleed from every wound, bleed from every scratch, bleed from every orifice. I have a separate video about DIC in my bleeding and coagulation playlist. Now let's compare. Exotoxin is released. Endotoxin is not released. It's part of the outer membrane. It's the lipid A, lipopolysaccharide. Exotoxin is polypeptide, i.e. protein-like or in the protein family, but endotoxin is in the lipid family. Exotoxins could be released from a gram-positive or gram-negative bacteria, but endotoxins only gram-negative. If it's a polypeptide, if it's a protein, usually proteins are more active than anything else in your body, it's strongly immunogenic, i.e. you will make antitoxins, i.e. we can use toxoids as vaccines against these doofuses. Conversely, since lipid A is a lipid, it's weakly immunogenic, therefore there is no antitoxin, no toxoid, no vaccine. Exotoxins have many different pictures and many different mechanisms, but endotoxin, only one freaking picture of the gram-negative sepsis. Who coded for this? The bacteriaplasmid or bacteriophage? But since the endotoxin is part of the bacteria itself, it has to be the bacterial chromosome itself, the big boss. Exotoxin, fortunately, is heat unstable. Heat is gonna kill it. Therefore, heat the tuna before you eat it, when in doubt. When in doubt, boil it out. But the endotoxin is heat stable. Examples of exotoxins are here. Example of endotoxin is here. You can say E. coli causing gram-negative sepsis. You can say meningococci, causing meningococcemia. Remember to integrate this with Waterhouse-Friedrichsen syndrome, which is an acute 
Edisonian crisis when your adrenal gland leaves the chat. If you like this video, you will love my antibiotics course. Comes with 40 videos about some doozy pharmacology at medicosisperfectionetis.com. I also have a surgery high yields course, an emergency medicine high yield course, all at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.